Hi, I'm Paco, and you're watching Bad Witch Books. I read about 12 books, and I, I'm looking at my story graph right here. I'm going to show the stats right here. My biggest uh, mood was um, emotional, because I want to start doing stats. So that's why I'm putting them here. So emotional was my biggest mood. Um, for pace-wise, I read, like, 82% of the books I read were medium paced, while 18% were fast-paced. And then page number, I read about, like, mostly from 400 to, from basically 500 to 300 pages size books. Um, a couple that were 500 plus, and a little bit that were under 300 pages. And all of them were fantasy fiction. And, um, the top genres I read were young adult and LGBTQI+, because it was Pride Month. So let's get to the actual books. We're going to start with the books that I do not own physically, and then we'll get to the books I own physically. So the first book I have will be Moa right here, will be The Rhythmatist. I needed to have read this in June, but I didn't finish it to, I mean, May, but I did not finish this until July, um, June. This was uh, Princess's book club, her royally book club pick for May. And it is by Brandon Sanderson. It is about uh, these characters. You have the ability to create like things with chalk, and they are arithmetists, and they have to defend against these like wild chalklings. And basically, at this school, kids start going missing, and our main character has who do, is not a chalk um, arithmetist, but like really obsessed with them. Wants to become arithmetist is like so like knowledgeable about the stuff wants to find out what's happening i enjoyed it it was like a solid three star rating for me it was like i said pretty much pretty good um the the it was i would we're gonna rewind that i enjoyed it three about like i gave it three stars it um the world was really cool. I really liked the fact that the magic system seemed really set up. Um, Brandon Sanderson, I've been reading a lot more of him this year. More than I planned to, but I enjoyed it. But yeah, we're going to get to the next book. So the next book I read this month is Family of Liars. I read this for a book club that I attend personally with my library. And um, this is a prequel to We Are Liars. And I have not read We Are Liars, but this is basically about this family. Uh, they Every summer they go to this island and the three daughters. Basically about their shenanigans they get into this one summer when the cousin, because there's like two houses on this island, the dads and then his brother, so their uncle. The cousin ends up bringing like three boys to the island and like shit happens. I will say the main character is a lot better than me for the shit that happens to her because I would have been fighting. But, um, it was alright. Like, another solid three-star read. I read this one basically in a day. And that's pretty much all I gotta say about it. Um, it does have spoilers for If We Were Liars. So I might eventually read If We Were Liars just to see how it correlates. But I ended up enjoying it. So, we're gonna get to the next... Now my... Oh, wait, one more. The next book technically book i'm counting them as one read for my tv art for my like account because they were graphic they were comics i read dc and marvel's pride anthology so this is me the dc one and this is the marvel one they are they're like pride celebration anthologies like short 80 page um comics so i'm gonna count them together as one but these have multiple authors and um they're pretty good they each had like their own story starting with the dc one i think i prefer a little bit more it, I really enjoyed their um, the letter that the actress that is playing Dreamer on Supergirl wrote for Dreamer being the first uh, like trans superhero and the actress is also trans and actually got to write the comic book story in last year's Pride event so I enjoyed that and then I also really enjoyed um, the Nubia story and then also at the end um, Kevin Conroy, who voices Batman, like, one of the most iconic voices of Batman, who's also a gay man, wrote a story about how being a gay man in a time when it was really difficult to be a gay man helped him play Batman. So I really enjoyed that comic. Um, if you ever do read that Conroy one, um, trigger warnings for the F slur is used a lot, but it is used in, a sto in the story. He uses it to show his experiences. So it was really powerful. To me, it was. And then for the Marvel one, I enjoyed it not as much as I enjoyed the DC one, just because I felt like the stories in the DC one hit a little harder for me, or I enjoyed them a little bit more. 
but um, I enjoyed it just as much. I enjoyed them. The uh, um, I liked the Marvel Boy and Hercules um, story about how Marvel Boy is like a scientific future like kind of character, and Hercules, of course, is a Greek myth character. But how they're making their relationship work, even though they're so different. Um, I liked the inclusion of the new trans character. I forget her name because she's very new. But her powers are really cool and they're going to introduce her into the X-Men comics. So I'm excited to see what they do with her. So now we're going to get to the books that I actually own. But I don't rate those books because those are anthologies. So I don't want to really rate them. But okay, on to the next, to my actually physically owned books. So the first book I have is physical book i have jay's gay agenda this is written by jason june this is about jay who he lives in this small town where he's basically the only out kid and he has to like experience something he comes out in freshman year he has to basically experience high school being the only out kid while everybody else gets to do all the relationship milestone stuff he is perpetually alone until his senior year his mom gets a um what does she get she gets a like upgrade, I forget the name of the word, but a new position at work, and she has to move to Seattle, and so he goes from being the only gay kid to being a bunch, of the, like, a town full of gay kids, uh, or especially in his school, and he gets to experience all his first. He creates a list of things he wants to do, and like like at, go on a date with a boy, lose his virginity, and all this stuff, and it's just his exploration. It's really cute. I enjoyed it. Um, I like the list aspect, um, and just reminded me of being I read for June was The Go Let's Be Honest Guide to Catholic School by Sonia Reyes. This is about Yami Flores. She is a junior, I think, in high school, and she transfers from her public school to the, um, majority white Catholic school because of her brother, and because he gets, like, accepted into it because he's really smart. But she goes to keep an eye on him, and um, she also is trying to avoid her ex-best friend who outed her, and she is trying to save money because she doesn't know what's going to happen when her religious mom finds out that she is gay. But I'm going to put this book down because it's heavy. But I really enjoyed it. I loved Yami as a character. I really enjoyed her brother and the sibling dynamic they had. I would say trigger warnings for thoughts of... A, not our main character, but there's another character um, has thoughts of suicide, so trigger warnings for that. But um, really enjoyed the book. Like even though I did say that it was a really happy book, it did make me cry. Want to cry at some points, especially how that work. I was like, no, I'm not gonna cry. But I enjoyed our um, the dynamic she had with her love interest. It was really cute, and I just love seeing brown queer people thrive. So I will say this book was five stars. Next book I read was um, Café con Leche. Café con Leche. So this is a Enemies to Lovers Grumpy Ex Sunshine a book about um, Theo Mori, who he is, his family owns a basically Asian, um, what is it called? It is a tea shop? Asian American Café. And Gabby Marino, who owns, his family owns a Puerto Rican a bakery. But they're basically rivals because this area just, like, doesn't want to always support people of color. And they're, so both, the fact that they're both, like, ethnic shops are rival are pitted against each other. And this new shop that is a fusion cafe opens up and it ends up, like, hurting both of the stores. And they basically end up having to work together to try to save their shops. And I really enjoyed this. Uh, I loved their, like, banter they had because um, they didn't like each other at first. And um, Gabby, his happiness, his joy he had was really sweet. And I liked Theo's, like, basically the opposite of it. That he felt they were really grumpy and could be mean at some times. But I, I just really enjoyed this. This also book also made me cry at one point. I was, again, at work. I'm like, why are these books hitting me? And, um... I don't know, it was just really sweet, especially the ending. Like, there was a scene at the end that made me, like, want to cry. And I was like, I can't do this at work! Ugh. But this is a 4.5 star. Like, 4 stars. Solid. Really good. Ooh, next book I l read was And They Lived by Steven Salvador. This is about a kid. What is his name? Because it was a minute since I read this. Chase. He is a plus-size queer character who is also um, exploring his gender. 
he's he they so like he he goes by he prefers he but he is also like experimenting with um they non-binary pronouns so but he is there going into college in animation school and they're very like romantic they're disney nerd very happy very like um romantic and they want love but they've never been in a relationship and then they meet this guy who's a poet and shit happens they fall for each other and then but the poet's family is really like homophobic or at least certain people in his family are homophobic and leads him to have issues with his sexuality it was really cute read um the story because they had this device where in the book where he, uh, was his, the main character has to create a short film, and you like read about the short film that he makes, this animated project he makes, which is really cute. I enjoyed it. Each of these books came for a different like trigger for me. Oh, also trigger warnings for body dysmorphia and thoughts of suicide in this book. But um, each of these books came for a certain thing, like because Chase in this book is plus size, he is chubby. And this came for me dealing with my weight issues. Not that that was super as serious as he did, but still, this dealt with being the like because I'm I said I the like mean one, the mean sibling and stuff, and not being good enough. This one dealt with favoritism. I don't know why each of these books had to come from me. Sorry, I did mini rant over, but the uh, so um, but that um, and they lived got three stars. 3.5 it was still really cute. The next book I read was The Bone Spindle by Leslie Vetter. This is uh, pitched as Indiana Jones meets Sleeping Beauty. It is about two treasure hunters, Faye and um, Shane, are on a hunt for this magical item to basically get rich, and also someone's been cursed and they're trying to break it. And basically, they end up finding the prince to a kingdom that has been asleep for a hundred years. That um, they want, Faye has to kiss to wake up and save the kingdom, but they have to find him, and they have to very much like find find the go through the trial to find his castle. Really good read. I enjoyed it. This was also three point five stars. Um, I really liked the villain that we got in this book, or the mentions of her, the Spindle Witch. Very, like, spooky witchy character, and you know me, you know I love that. Excited for book two, because we're actually going to meet the villain. Because she, was she like, played a part in here, but we didn't actually get to meet her in this. So, yeah, I'm excited for that. Also love this cover. Next book I read this month was my book club pick for the month of June, which was Bones of Rowan by Sarah Rugley. This is about a about Iris. She is a immortal tightrope dancer, so she can't die. And she has had amnesia. She only remembers the last ten years where she's been at the circus. And she basically gets found by this group and they're like this guy's like, I could help you find out about your past if you join this tournament for me and win where she has to fight other people with powers. I enjoyed this. I gave it like a four star read. I do have my live show is up, so you guys can watch more thoughts about that if you've read the book, where I do go into spoiler discussions. But um, I enjoyed most of it. I do feel like some parts did meander a lot, but I enjoyed Iris, the main character. The action scenes were really um, entertaining and enticing. And the power sets that a lot of people had were really good. But like I said, you could always watch my live show to see more of my thoughts for this. Whew. Okay. Next book I read this month was A Dark and Hollow Star by Ashley Shutterworth. This is about four teens um, in the world. One is a Ironborn princess. The Ironborn are like human and uh, half human, half fae. One is the prince of the summer court and his bodyguard, his grumpy bodyguard, and the other is a former fury. And basically murders start happening and they are targeting ironborn children and nobody cares because like ironborn are second class to the fairies in the fae community. So this is like an urban fantasy because this is like in our world but they do have like their own setup system. And um, these four are the only basically the only people who care and they try to solve the mystery. This book is very, most of it I would say is 
world building and I feel like maybe Ashley Shutterworth went a little too much into the world building because you learned about stuff about characters or things we haven't even we didn't even meet like I didn't need to know the like fall court's powers if none of our characters are fall court or they're not dealing with fall court stuff so that kind of like made the book a little slow it slowed it down where I'm like yes I, I do love world building but I also feel like there's time and a place for things like we don't need to know it if it's not going to affect us at that point or if it's not going to like I get it if it's going to affect us in the future but like it I don't know I felt like a lot of it was world building and that kind of slowed the book down for me but I really did enjoy I ended up really enjoying the former Fury character um she was really fun and I'm excited to see what happens with our prince and sunshine and our prince and body our prince guard uh, couple like their relationship see where that goes really enjoyed it all of the character all the um mcs and the character um perspective characters were queer in this book Ooh, okay two more books last book i read next book i read this month was wild and wickly wild and wicked things by francesca may this is about basically it is this um described as great gatsby but with queer witches this was Princess's book club pick for June for her Royal Elite book, book Club. And I really enjoyed this. This uh, follows our main characters. Um, what is her name? I just finished this. Anne. She goes to the mysterious Crescent Island because her father has died. And she has to basically take care of his things. And then also find, follows Evangeline. She is basically one of the witches of the island. Like, she has these decadent parties. People come to her for, like, love spells and stuff like that. I really enjoyed the witchiness of this book. Like, this is, like, a 4.5. I think this is going to go up with some of my favorite witchy books. Just, I love the way the witches were done. Like, this is going to go up with, um, the Hacienda and, um, Cersei and, um, what's the other night book? Oh, uh, uh, Winter Night Trilogy, like, as my, like, favorite kind of witchy books really enjoyed the way the magic worked in this i love the found family that emmeline had i really enjoyed emmeline as a character i um related to the way she wanted to take care of her family the way that she's kind of like bitchy to protect people or like to protect herself she's not even really that bitchy but she has like that like kind of like i will get this done i really enjoyed her as a character I also loved isabel and the other um characters we meet but enjoyed this um i would check into the trigger warnings about this because there is like blood magic so self-harm is involved and um they do discuss abortions and this because this takes place in the like 19 something so trigger warnings for this book but really enjoyed it like 4.5 stars last book i read was a reread for me for this month and it was A Court of Mist and Fury. I tabbed it up. I mean, I think we all know what this is about, but this is the second book in the Court of Thorns and Roses series, and it follows Feyre. Um, I enjoyed this. As I don't know if I enjoyed it as much. I was able to point out more, some issues with it that I maybe not have noticed when I read it before. But I do think I'm going to keep it. I'm going to keep it at its five-star rating because I still enjoyed it. I still love the parts I loved. I was still at work, like, listening. Because I hybrid read this. For the, this is the first book I really ever, like, hybrid read where I was, like, physically looking and listening at the same time. And I was still, like, at certain parts, like, that's my bitch. I love Nesta. I love Amran. Hill I'll Die On is Nesta. But I enjoyed this. I was, I'm so happy I was able to tab this edition up. So that I'm excited to get to do that with um, Court of Wings and Rowan on my next next month. But those are the books I read this month. I believe my favorite books, book of the month, of course, I mean, Let's Be Honest, Guide to Catholic School and Wild Wicked Things, I think, were my top two books of the month. What were your guys' favorite reads of the month? What did you read this month? Um, check the description down below for all my socials. I will... Um, link princess's channel because i mentioned her in this video yeah and just know that i know the world is seems like it is a crazy you know it is a crazy place right now with everything going on but try to find at least some joy because that is the only way we could survive we 
we can survive in a world. So I will see you guys next time. Like and subscribe if you haven't already.